everybody. This is Alicia, also known as AVP. I'm joined by my husband, Jack, and we're also joined by a special guest, Kelsey Horn. She's known for our crochet figures that we see that are made in the Orville fashion. So, Kelsey, what inspired you to make these Orville figures in the first place? So, I just started crocheting um, earlier this year, and mm -hmm. I figured I was looking at some patterns online, and I was like, I think it would be really cool if there were, you know, crochet patterns or figures related to the Orville, mm -hmm. um, because that's one of my favorite shows. And I found one pattern and I took it and ran with it and I made it my own and decided to kind of manipulate the pattern in a way that works. Um, and... Ed Mercer came from it. Nice. Yeah, so what does the Ed one look like that you made by any chance? So this is the original. This was the very first one that I did. Um, <laughs> as you can see, the, the, the sleeves are the wrong color, which is why this one's not for sale. This one's just the, the demo. <laughs> right. <laughs> the mm -hmm. sleeves are the wrong color. There's no emblem or anything on it. Um, but he's so cute. Yes, he is. Yeah. So how long does it yeah. take you to make one of those figures by any chance? If I were to sit and do it all in one sitting, it would probably take about eight hours. Okay. Maybe six. Yeah. Gotcha. So it really just kind of depends um, on what I'm doing, what my distractions are. <laughs> and, um, you know, if I, if I am able to just sit and work on it without any interruptions. Fair enough. Yeah. That's cool. That's very cool. So how long have you been doing crochet per se? I mean, it doesn't have to be these orbital figures, but how long have you been doing crocheting? I started crocheting in, I want to say, January of, of this year. Okay. So it really hasn't been that long. Um, I've been knitting since high school. Um, okay. So I've been, I've been knitting for like, 12, 10, 12 years, something like that. Okay. Um, and I could never pick up crochet and <laughs> until I found these kits called the Woobles. Okay. They were, nice. on, they were on Shark Tank. Yeah. And cool. they taught me how to crochet. Nice. So what's the most challenging part in creating these Orville figures and other figures that you make with the crochet in? Keeping the tension on the yarn um, consistent throughout the entire piece. Okay. Yeah, because some can be too tight, others can be too loose, and then it just kind of, everything's kind of off. It's kind of crooked. Okay. Huh. Yeah. That's so, like, so besides the Orville, are you a fan of just sci-fi in general, like with Star Trek or Stargate? Or? You know, the Orville was really my first, you know, put the toes in the water for okay. sci-fi. Um, I never watched... Star Trek growing up, um, my brother was really big into Star Wars when okay. we were kids, mm -hmm. um, but I was never really much into it. I thought it was kind of cool. I fell asleep during, um, like, I think it was six, movie six. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, fair enough. <laughs> Whatever <laughs> movie came out in like 2008, 2007, I went okay. to see it and I fell asleep. I feel really guilty about it. And I'm going back and I'm watching, I'm rewatching them with my son. Um, Fair enough. I have a tendency to fall asleep in movies. So it's nothing, okay. it, you know, it's not about the movie. It's just me as a person. Right. Gotcha. <laughs> so what's the easiest part of making when you're making your crochet figures? What's the easiest part? You said the hardest part is keeping the tension. What's the easier part of it? Stuffing it. Okay. Putting that the sounds stuffing in. Sounds pretty straightforward. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's hands down the easiest. Um, you just put the stuffing in and manipulate it however <laughs> you want. Fair if enough. I want his head to be taller and skinnier, I just push it together. If I want it a little bit more flat and round, I just go like this. And now he's got more of a rounder face. <laughs> nice. Okay. So what got you started in doing the crochet and by any chance? <sighs> I wanted to do something different other than knitting hats. I was sick of hats. I was sick of making hats. Mm -hmm. 
and I figured, you know, I live in Phoenix. Who wears a hat? <laughs> that makes sense. Sense. <laughs> Very true. I can imagine you know? people being like, oh, I need a hat. No, I don't. No, I don't. Exactly. Like it's <laughs> December, what, December 8th? And it's 77 degrees outside right now. Like who's going to wear a beanie? Literally nobody. That's so true. I was like, why not make something that can relate more to people? And so that's when I was like, I'm going to crochet. I'm going to start. I'm going to figure it out. That makes sense. I mean, it, yeah, I can understand that because here in California is like similar temperature. So I understand what you're yeah. saying there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's about 76 degrees right here. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, so, when I lived so in Michigan, everybody wore hats, you know, because right. it's, it's cold. But yes. out here, it's just like I'm making I'm making these hats and it's like, where do they go? They just sit in my closet. Right. I mm -hmm. can understand that. So what was one character that you're looking forward to creating? I mean, I know you, we were talking before we started the stream. What's one character that you're looking forward to creating? There's a couple um, that I know are going to be really cha like challenging, but I know that they're going to be fun. Um, Bordis, because of the head curves. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, I think Yafit. I have the yarn for Yafit. I'm trying to find a good pattern um, to kind of create my own. That one I know is definitely going to be a challenge. And I'm trying to think of stuffing to go inside of him so that he's kind of gelatinous right. and squishy. Right. And then, <laughs> and then, like, how do you do the mouth with that one? That would be a challenge, I think. Exactly. You know, is it something that I'm going to embroider? Is it something that I'm just going to leave open? You know, so that one, I that one's going to take some planning and a little bit of time. Of course. Um, Let's see. I think those are my two biggest. I think Isaac is going to be kind of fun too to try to figure out. Mm -hmm. um, I might use my Jack Skellington pattern that I have okay. and just change up the colors and okay. see how that works, see how that comes out. Sounds good. So, what's one character that you don't think you'll be creating of all the characters by any chance? I don't think I'm going to make Charlie. Fair enough. Fair I can enough. respect that. She's only, I, one of, only in one season. Yeah. And she wasn't my favorite character on the show. Sure. So I'm a little on the fence about it. My boyfriend really thinks that I should. Right. But mm -hmm. I'm just, I Maybe. don't know. I don't really have a desire. Can I tell a little story about that? Um, so I actually yes. met her, the, the actress who played Charlie. And um, so uh, for season three, I got to go to uh, the IMAX headquarters and we, got, and we got to see a viewing of the first episode of season three. Uh -huh. and, um, and Penny, who plays Claire, and the uh, Anne, I think her name is, who plays yes. Charlie, uh, were there. And we watched the we watched the the episode first and i mean yeah i i had this like negative feeling of of charlie herself it was just like she was she was angry negative uh, not very happy with isaac and so when they introduced her and she came out in, instead of seeing like that person come out i saw this tiny skinny ball of happiness like just jump just bouncing around and she was so <laughs> excited to be there was, yeah and so they we we were able to ask a few questions and then uh we got pictures together afterwards but she was very nice very kind very approachable uh That's definitely awesome. nothing like she she was in that episode <laughs> <laughs> That's good that is good Yeah okay yeah, I can see that. Well, you think you might. So, in that case, if you're if you're not gonna make Charlie, I take as you may not do secondary carries like Talia, some of the other Krill. I mean, I would like to figure out how to do how to do Krill. I mean, I have this theory that Mocklins and Krill are distant relatives. Okay. Um, it's kind of like my own sort of theory that I haven't told anybody about. Um. So I might do Talea just to try and see what I can do with, you know, the krill head shape and everything. Um, I don't know if I'll list her for sale necessarily, just in case it doesn't come out the way that I want it. Um, sure. But, you know, something to kind of work with. 
Fair enough. Uh, so obviously you're an Orville fan. So have you always been an Orville fan or did you get into it midway, like the second season, the third season, or was it from day one, basically? So I actually didn't know about the Orville until uh, 2021. Okay. Was it 21? I think um, I saw it on Hulu and it was, it was uh, just as season three was airing okay. each week on Hulu. Um, right. I don't remember if that was last year or the year before, but I remember being homesick with COVID and trying to find something to watch on Hulu. And I saw the Orville and I saw that it had Seth MacFarlane and I was like, well, I like Seth MacFarlane, so I'll just, I'll give it a shot. And I watched it and I got hooked. Oh yeah. You know, when I, when I first heard about it, uh, I was expecting Family Guy in space, but I'm so <laughs> glad it didn't come out that way. I'm so glad yeah. it came out more of like a traditional science fiction show. And it really, I really liked the progression of the characters in the story that they mm -hmm. told with all of the characters as the seasons went on, you know, because it, it, it did kind of start out as almost like Family Guy in space. Mm -hmm. And then it progressed to something so much deeper. And I love yes. that about the show. Definitely. It's not, it's more than just family guy in space. I mean, it's, it deals with a lot of in-depth subject that most people think they talked about that. I'm like, yes, they did. Oh yeah. By the, yeah. by the third episode of the first season, they, they really knocked it out of the park. They really did. Yeah. Yeah. I've, yeah. So I've been a, I've been a huge fan for a couple of years now. I bought, I've gotten stickers. I've gotten, um, I got it. I bought a coffee mug from the Hulu shop and I, I did like the Orville coffee mug that you can personalize Yes. And so like, <laughs> I wanted my name on the back and I wanted the um, I wanted the white mug and with the blue lettering on the back. Mm -hmm. And the mug that arrived was the black mug. Um, and so you couldn't really see the, the whatever it said on the back. And I finally like, okay. I shined it under the light and it said Admiral Meg. <laughs> OK, that's Admiral weird. Meg. <laughs> Where did that come from? <laughs> right? So I reached out to Hulu and I was like, I got the wrong order. And they were like, okay, no worries. We'll refund you. We'll send you a new one. I said, great. Make Please make sure that it's the one that I ordered. Like, this is my mm -hmm. order number. This right. is what I want it to say. So about a week later, I receive another one. Again, the black mug where it says Admiral Meg. Oh, I'm like, no. I just no. can't, I can't win. Oh, so no. I just, no, I, terrible. I ended up keeping them and I think I got rid of them when we moved um, oh. over the summer. But I just, you know, I, I want to order a new one, but I don't have faith that it's going right. to be the right one. Yeah, that's too bad because I, I ordered, I ordered her, oops, wrong one. I ordered her a, uh, <laughs> <laughs> one of those it's not it's not a mug it's it's a glass yeah, it's the glass yeah that has my name and, on it and uh it turned out just fine yeah <laughs> yeah no, it was just admiral meg i mean i guess that's kind of funny because i dressed up as meg griffin for halloween okay <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> i mean i guess it works <laughs> yeah but it's probably thinking hey i don't really want meg i want my known name so i can understand yeah, that. exactly I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that, that, that's a funny story. Thank you, Kelsey, for sharing that with us. Yeah, of course. So what exactly is your new, next project? I mean, are you going to still work with the Orville ones? Or are you going to try to branch up to other type of figures by any chance? So I'm, I'm kind of splitting myself into a bunch of different areas right now. So mm -hmm. I have John's arm <laughs> um, and his other arm. I'm working on. Um, I'm also working on finishing this guy. Ooh. So this was supposed nice. to be my Ted and I ended up getting the wrong color. Oops. And so this is my, this is my practice Ted and okay. I'm not too happy with the pattern. So I'm going to try to find something else to make the real Ted. Um, but okay. he's still really big and squishy and I'm going to keep this guy forever. Um, and then mm -hmm. I'm also working on projects for my coworkers too for our Christmas party. So mm -hmm. thank goodness I don't have very many coworkers. <laughs> like each one <laughs> is going to get their own um their own they're called Amigurumi. Um, okay. so their own little stuffed animal. 
depending on like, they've sent me what they want. And so I'm going to make it for them. I'm going to surprise my doctor that I work with, um, with one of her dog that just recently passed. So, oh, wow. Yeah. And nice. they're each going to go in like a coffee mug and everybody gets their own. Very <laughs> cool. Yeah. Yes. So has any of the cast or the crew reached out to you since they know about, or do they even know that you've created these Orville characters by any chance? I wish. Oh my gosh, I would die. <laughs> okay. Um, they, I, I, it hasn't been acknowledged, so I don't know if they know. Um, okay. I mean, I've tagged Seth MacFarlane um, in the one that I, in the two that I've made um, of Ed Mercer. Everybody said that I should have um, taken one to the concert on Tuesday, and like gave it to him at the concert, but I didn't. I didn't have one to give him and I didn't want to give him the one that was wrong. Right. Sure. So, that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Well, hopefully this so, interview will help get the word out for them to say, cause me and my husband, so. we, we, we've spoken to several of the cast and crew many, many times. And so, Hey, hopefully this will help get the word out for them. Yeah. yeah. I would, I would love that. I would love to make one for each individual person and send it to them um, so that they have their own. And then if that, if that ever happens, I have to make sure that it's right. <laughs> yes, and they're course. perfect. <laughs> of course, yeah, definitely. That's great. Uh, yeah. Hopefully, hopefully they can. Uh, you can do that. I hope definitely. so. I would love to do that. That'd be such a huge honor, and they wouldn't have they wouldn't have to pay for it. I'd I'd pay for shipping and everything. They'd right. get it for free. Nice. So, what do you exactly do you use to make your figures? I mean, I know some specific types of yarn. Some use particular material. What do you use exactly to make your figures with? So I have. Um, I, I bought yarn on sale. Um, I mm -hmm. don't even, I don't know what the brand is. It works really well for what I'm doing. Um, I don't know if it's a discontinued yarn. I don't know if I'm going to try to find something different once I run out. Um, but right now I just, I want to be kind of consistent. Um, but mm -hmm. I'll find some other stuff that's maybe a higher quality, something maybe a little bit softer because this is kind of rigid. Um, but once you stuff it, it's pretty good. Okay. Um, I have my KXK crochet hook. I love this. This is one of the best investments I ever made, even though it was only like $34. But it counts my stitches and my rows, and it's got a little flashlight on the tip of it too, oh, which nice. is really nice. And it comes with like eight different crochet like hooks and I can take these on and off and switch them out oh, nice. as I need. Good. It, That's very handy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. It's so amazing. And then I use polyfill to stuff them and the little, um, I have little plastic safety eyes. I don't embroider the eyes. My embroidery skills are still something to be desired. Fair enough. So yeah. working on it. Um, but I, I try to use safety eyes for everything. Um, I try to do as minimal embroidery as possible. But I do embroider like the shoulder, the shoulder things that they have. Okay, the, the, okay, the, okay, the epilots, yes. Yeah, and then I, um, I do embroider the uh, symbol on the front. Okay, okay it's not great, but it's sure, something. sure, that's fine. <laughs> So does it help to rewatch the episodes to create your figures or what helps you do when you're creating them exactly so you can do them properly? Just the pattern, you know, if, as long as it's a good pattern, that's the most important thing. If the pattern isn't good, then I'm going to frog it. I'm going to take it all apart and I'm going to start over and I'm going to find a different pattern. Okay. Fair enough. So what kind of advice would you want to give to somebody that may be interested in saying, Hey, I want to try crochet. I see the way Kelsey's doing it. Maybe I can try. What would you advice would you give them in that kind of case? Start small. Start small. Don't start with granny squares. <laughs> start with amigurumi. It is the easiest way to learn how to crochet. It's literally just a single crochet throughout the entire piece. Um, and what really helped me was using the Woobles pattern. Like okay. using the Woobles okay. as like a company <laughs> to be able um, to figure out how to do it. Because the way that this girl explains everything um, and teaches you step by step how to do it, it's fantastic. If it wasn't for her, I probably wouldn't be doing it. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah. 
Uh, so where could we buy these figures that you created, like the Ed Mercer one? Where could we buy it if we wanted to buy it by any chance? So I have an Etsy shop. It's called Spaceman Crochet. Um, so spacemancrochet.etsy.com. Uh, last okay. I checked, it shows that I only have two in stock um, because I don't want to overload myself with orders just mm -hmm. to be on the safe side. Um, but if you reach out to me on Twitter um, at Kelso Wears Prada, I will, you know, we can figure something out. Um, they do come on a first come first serve basis. They're made as, as ordered. Um, mm -hmm. I don't have like a, a stock supply of anything right mm -hmm. now. Um, so they, they do take, they do take some time. I ship within, I, they're done within three to five days. Um, just because I work full time. I'm a mom. I got banned. I'm with, I play with the Arizona winds. I got all this stuff. So it takes me a couple days to really get them done. Um, but I, I try to get them done as quickly as I can. Makes total sense. So about how, do you do international orders? Because I know some of our fans are international fans. Would you be willing to ship to them overseas over, say, in Australia, England? Would you be willing to ship to them? Or is it going to be only for the U.S. fans only? No, I can definitely do international. Um, my first order was um, from Allie, who is part of the Orville community. And she lives in Canada. So mm -hmm. I, she was my first order. I shipped to Canada. So I'm definitely nice. willing to do it. Okay. Uh, so you mentioned that you like the Orville and stuff like that. So is there any particular character that stands out to you that's maybe your personal favorite by any chance? I really like Gordon. I mean, of course, like we okay. all love Ed, you know, because who doesn't <laughs> of love course. Seth MacFarlane, you know? But mm -hmm. as a character in like character development, I think Gordon has really um stuck out to me mm -hmm. i just think he's so funny and i feel like he's grown so much as a helmsman and like as a person also and my heart just broke for him in oh. uh, twice in a lifetime yeah. yes definitely you know i i do like regular old gordon when he's you know uh doing funny stuff but w when when he's serious when he becomes serious that's like powerful yeah, like yeah, yeah. Scott Grimes has grown so much. I mean, we saw him in the movie Oppenheimer, and he really, really was definitely not the same Gordon because you're expecting to be all jokey, but no, he's very serious in that. I'm like, yeah. oh, interesting. Him and Robert yeah. Downey Jr. knock it out of the park. I I want to see that movie. It was between that and uh, and the Barbie movie. <laughs> Fair <laughs> and enough. Oppenheimer. <laughs> I I chose. I had I had this one day where I could go see whatever movie I wanted by myself. And I chose the Barbie movie. And honestly, I'm really glad I did because that was a great movie. Mm -hmm. I heard okay. it was really good. That's good. That's good. I'm glad we, you had a good we time. Saw, we saw the timer. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we did. But we had a good time with that one, too. <laughs> yes. Uh, let me think. So since you're fairly new to the Orville community, are you about aware of the Orville game that's out there? Have you played that by any chance or are you not aware of that game? Uh, I feel like I'm kind of aware of it, but I've never played it. Okay, fair enough. Um, it's free on Steam, right? Yes, it is. It's on Steam. It's free. I mean, the oh, people perfect. that made that messy desk is awesome. I mean, they basically try to make sure it's true to the show, basically. So I've actually interviewed the one of the people that created that game, and they said that basically it works side by side with Tom Constantino, the lead editor, and one of the producers with Seth MacFarlane to make sure everything matches each other and that way they're working in tangent with one another to say okay this looks like this this looks like that let's make sure that they match that's awesome and, and they've added a lot more to it too like uh, it's more interactive now yes you can customize your quarters you can play it do battle simulations i believe you can in the newest update oh that's awesome. so yes yeah, it's, it's, it's grown a lot <laughs> yeah i'm gonna have to check that out definitely uh <laughs> let me think did you read the Orville comics by any chance? I'm curious. No, I haven't. I haven't. I, I need to. Orville inked. 
Uh, mm -hmm. Not Orville Inc. So these are the ones that were created by David A. Goodman, one of the Orville producers, mm -hmm. and David Cabeza. So David Cabeza, okay. I actually interviewed him as well. And he basically worked in tangent with Seth and everybody to make sure that they create the characters where they look almost like the same character that you would see on screen, only it's in an animated form, basically. Okay. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. I've seen it on Twitter. Yeah, yeah but we'll definitely I get to Orville Inc. too. <laughs> yes, that's what we're well, that's what we're planning on doing next. After, because so me and my husband, I don't know if you're aware of this. So we basically do a lot of Orville content, and we do watch parties. We we're reading the Orville novella, which we're almost finished with, and then we'll be reading Todd's comics, the inked ones next. So, yeah. yeah, that's awesome. I love that. Yes, I'm glad I got my my boyfriend into the Orville because he really really <laughs> liked it too. Good, good, nice. I'm glad. Yeah, good, 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 he's still good. upset with how season three ended. <laughs> oh. Well, hopefully we get a fourth season. We're still waiting. I mean, I'm hanging on to that hope, and I'm telling people, hey, don't lose that hope. Hopefully we will. Exactly. Yeah. No, I suspect mm -hmm. we will. I, I think we'll get a season four. Yeah, yes. it'll take some time, but we'll get it. Yeah. Definitely. It'll, it'll I, be I want, well worth I, it. What I really want to see is I want to see um, Ed go and get his daughter. Me too. That's what I really want to see. Yes. Yeah. And hopefully some closure with Havina, maybe even Lokar as well. Yeah. I I like Lokar. Yeah. An underappreciated character for sure. Definitely. Absolutely. Um, anything else you want to say, sweetheart, before we wrap up? Uh no, I think I think you covered it up pretty pretty much everything. I Sounds think. good. <laughs> Sounds good. So Kelsey, anything you want to plug away before we wrap up? Um, I don't think so. I think I'm good. All right. Sounds good. Well, hope everybody enjoys this interview and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye-bye.